So today's been a pretty appalling day weather-wise, but as the day draws to a close, I'm off out for an evening drive at 8.30 p.m. to make a short video of this 1969 Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow Mulliner Park Ward Coupe. It's not a car we get uh, very often because there weren't that many of them made. Although the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow was the highest volume model that uh, Rolls-Royce had produced hitherto, the Coupe was very much uh, a small volume, beautiful, special as it were. Very much a hand-finished car and uh, an absolutely delightful, graceful uh, vehicle to look at which was later badged as the Rolls-Royce Corniche. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to take it for a gentle meandering country drive so I can put it through its paces and really talk about its condition. Now there's an awful lot of information on this car on the website. There's also a history file which details uh, the work that's been done to the car. We've, we've known the car for some time, we've sold it before. So for example, one of the first thing I noticed when I, uh, when I took the car out of uh, out of our building was just how good the midnight blue paintwork is. It's a beautiful job and uh, the rest of the, uh, of the car has been done restored tastefully to retain as much originality as possible but also to improve some, some areas which you know were, were starting to look a little bit uh, less than perfect. So for example the woodwork on this car is gorgeous and clearly at some point that, that's been restored. The car is now uh, over 50 years old and uh, yeah, it's, it presents very well indeed. Driving it, really, there's, there's really not much to comment on. These earlier cars don't have the very expensive to put right compliance suspension. These have a, a, an earlier suspension design which is much more conventional. The ride is gorgeous and uh, you know, it, it is, as you'd expect, an extremely refined car to drive. So far, I've dealt with the first fault, which was a flashing green light. That meant that it needed a bit more fuel. So I've now, now come to a nice little spot to do a walk around. The sun is low in the sky. I'll try and do it without too many shadows. And as I'm reversing, you won't hear much. It's supposed to be one of the quietest cars in the world, and this is. Mostly you'll just hear the creaking of my body on the leather. So the handbrake's on and you might just be able to hear a gentle hum in the background but little else. And it's quite important that you you do hear very little mechanical noise because these vehicles have hydraulic tappets, they also have a brake pump and if if they're getting worn you hear you hear like ticky tick 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 rattles on the engine. This doesn't have any of that. It's absolutely just as you'd expect. And the vehicle's been fitted with a stainless steel uh, exhaust system. They, are, they make a slightly more ringing sound than the original mild steel ones did. And so if it's quiet, you know, when it's got a uh, stainless exhaust on, it really is a quiet engine. So I'll turn her off and we'll just have a look around. Well, as you can see from this first shot, the, the look down the lines of the car, absolutely flat and straight and just what you'd expect. It's had a great deal of money spent on a, a comprehensive uh, bare metal restoration in the past and, and it shows. For a 51-year-old car, I don't think you could possibly expect a body to be any nicer than this. It gleams in its midnight uh, blue finish. Uh, a really very good presentation. And as you look at the, uh, the offside and the the shut lines of the doors, there's really absolutely nothing to criticise. Although you might be able to see my reflection in the boot lid, the idea is to show you what the luster of the paint is and uh, how good the paint finish is on this car. I 
On the interior, the seats are good on the car, but there are, particularly on the driver's seat, just one or two areas where the, the hide is showing through um, in, in the areas where the seats have cracks. And uh, that's not a difficult job to do at all, especially uh, on this colour of interior. So it's uh, what we call reconnalizing, and that wouldn't be a very expensive job to do at all, but it would really uh, put the icing on the cake, so to speak. Very nice indeed in the back of the car, and as you can see, the headlining is perfect. I think if it were my car, I'd want to see a couple of period badges put onto this badge bar. Perhaps a, you know, membership of the RREC, the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club, with their lovely um, red and chrome uh, mascot or, or badge here. Uh, perhaps an AA and RAC badge. That would really sort of uh, accentuate the period nature of the car. Well, that was rather lovely. What a super place this is. Rural North Yorkshire. Actually, it handles really, really well. So there you have it, a very beautiful Mulliner Park Ward Coupe, needing very, very little to bring it back to absolutely first-class condition. And there's the loudest thing on the car ticking of the indicator. Very little was allowed to interrupt the quiet solitude of a Rolls-Royce.